All right, what's going on, everybody? So I want to talk a little bit about how to interpret what's going on in the Middle East as it relates to the different levels that I talked about. So different target audiences are able to digest the information at a different level of maturity than another person who has been down a, if you want to call it rabbit hole, if you want to call it conspiracy, if you want to talk about even general geopolitical tensions based on certain motivations, certain religious you know, backings and just various things, right? Money, follow the money and all these other Things And so, again, I'm not here to claim like I know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. But what I do want to make clear is that there is a progression, if you want to call it a linear progression and upgrade to further like levels of discernment and understanding. And some part of it takes faith because a lot of us can sit here and say, where's the evidence? Where's this and that? But you can't just go by linear one to one pieces of quote unquote evidence because there's other things that are hidden in the background that may never even po- probably come out because at the uh, at the risk of world war an actual world war based on you know just different motives based on people who can't really digest and and look at the truth they will you know riot you're already seeing it with uh, Palestine you know all these things people that don't have a strong level of understanding they're going to get behind a movement or, a, or an ideology that's not good because they don't have the full story in the picture and they are not upgraded to a higher level of maturity. And so this is why I want to quickly touch on a generic outlook on how people, based on the target audience and their level of maturity, their level of exposure to information, how they perceive what's going on, right? And so I'm going to take two very you know hot topic scenarios the russia ukraine as well as this israel palestine now lebanon iran and we know based on yesterday's news and just everything that's coming out some people saying red october if you're down in the audience three area other people saying that this is based on with the elections and everything uh, going uh, on and with all of the biblical stuff that people are trying to interpret in eschatology as coming to fruition. And so I want to talk about this based on these audiences. So let's take a look. If you look at how audience one looks at the world, first of all, you're seeing a bunch of flags with countries and some arrows. So I'll explain what this is and and how people, based on that conflict, how people might be interpreting this because they have a lower level of maturity. And again, I'm not offending anybody when I'm trying to say this. It's just like telling a five-year-old child how to look at certain moral principles. And because they're five, they're not going to understand certain things like selfishness, stealing, and caring for others and all that stuff. They are five years old. You're not going to yell at them, but you're seeing them where they are because of their upbringing, because of maybe circumstantial things, environmental things, education systems, and all that stuff, their exposure to the general world uh, purview and, and the ideologies, and that's how they have become. And so that's why we need to pray with the look over people, give them grace and mercy in certain things. But the same, the same happens now. So audience one people will look at something like the Ukraine, Russia, and if they have any little bit of trying to interpret what's going on, they would assume things like, oh, and again, look at the red arrow on the colors. Russia invaded Ukraine. That's what media tells me. That's what I believe. Russia and China are in bed with each other and they're helping each other out. Communists, they're not good, blah, blah, blah. And U- USA and Russia, they have some tension. That's why it's yellow here. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're enemies and all that stuff. And then you have uh, USA helping Ukraine, sending money, and Russia equals bad. And so it's very simplistic, right? Russia equals, uh, Russia is bad because they invaded Ukraine. I'm looking at the, the, the text here I have at the bottom. China is bad because they're communist. We need to send more money to Ukraine so we can help them. Putin is bad. And this is how they look at the world because they're looking at it from a limited perspective on we see that somebody, quote unquote, invaded Ukraine and some people are dying. And we keep being told that China is not good for us. And we keep being told that Xi Jinping and Putin and blah, blah, blah. So this is how they uh, interpret the world simplistically. The same goes for Israel. People will say things like free Palestine or I stand with Israel, right? Or peace in the Middle, Middle East. If you're a little bit above, you know, having stereotypes and hatred towards certain ethnic groups and you would think things like, oh, peace in the Middle East, blah, 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 right? How How is any other solution better than just having nobody attack each other and nothing happening, right? So people are thinking, well, based on my limited understanding, and they're not, they're not going to admit this, I'm just saying this to uh, describe audience one, 
they're going to sit there and think, well, based on my understanding, then peace is the best. And if you're taking sides and you're like, well, I'm, I'm uh, anti-Zionist or I'm anti-whatever, and they're not going to say anti-Semitic. They're going to say things like, well, free Palestine. People are dying. Why, why would you, uh, you know, you go into the comments of any video and say, why, why would you support Israel killing people, right? Like, this is what they see at surface level. And they think that things like, oh, they're at war with each other. They are... Lebanon and Israel are at war with each other. They're they're grouping countries together. Like all of Israel is bad. All of Palestine, they're not good, and all this stuff, Gaza, and in these things. And uh, now with Iran coming in, they're like, oh, like they're attacking, and then now Israel needs to defend, and USA is helping Israel. All that stuff. This is how audience once one looks at some of these geopolitical. Uh, you know things. Now, if you look at what audience two is, audience two is the next level of maturity and they're able to uh, look deeper into figuring things out on their own. They're beyond, right? They're beyond just being told by the media and how to interpret things. They look at it with a critical perspective. They may not be on the conspiracy spectrum, but they're looking at deeper motives, deeper things because they can think more critically. These are your, even if you want to say college educated people, this is your deeper, more mature Christians. These are guys that are trying to really understand and dial in what's going on. They don't have a, you know, prejudice against certain groups. They don't have this hatred because, you know, they're one country, quote unquote, is doing something. And so now they are siding with one country and they're a complete, you know, free Palestine movement. They're a free, like a, I stand with only Israel. Let's kill them all. You know, that kind of, we're, they're not in that position. What they're looking at is everybody irrespective of what they're doing holistically as a country, but each to each their own. Like there could be you know, they may even think like uh, Putin is bad and the regime is bad, but the Russian people are good, right? CCP, the CCP ideology is bad, but Chinese people are good. If they come to know Christ, they come to know, you know, God, then that's good. That's good, right? So they, they at least can um, uh, differentiate and segment people groups, tiers, socioeconomic, all this stuff, political ideologies, just like in the U.S., right? U.S., if you look at the U.S., other countries, if you, again, I, I don't want to generalize, but maybe some people in Afghanistan just think all U.S. people are evil. All of them are bad. And we in the U.S., we look at the people and we say, well, there's a left, there's a right, there's a conservative, there's a Republican, there's a, a liberal, there's a, a Democratic side and all that stuff. So you can see inside that there are some good people, there are bad people. And you can go even as far as to say just because they are named Christian. They are named Republicans. Doesn't mean they're good. We call them rhinos, right? Uh, right? Republican in name only, as well as any other thing that differentiates the people and the ideologies within the country. So the same goes for when you look, when audience two looks at the different countries, they look at the country and they say, okay, the people inside are good or bad. Or you can go as far as to say even that some people are being blackmailed and they're doing things against their will. You can say that about, you know, CCP or any of these other maybe Russian, you know, assets because they're thinking critically and they're thinking at least it's not uh, homogenous. It's not a, a stereotype like what when some people say I hate all of Israel or I hate all of Palestine or free Palestine and they don't see anything beyond uh, that aspect. And so what they're seeing here is, and you can see the arrows, it's all orange. So meaning that there's some good, there's some bad. Everybody can see other things going on uh, at different levels based on how you see the motive behind certain groups and what their actual motive may be, whether it's purely evil or they're being blackmailed and just told what to do or they are living in a society that they cannot leave, right? If they're drafted into the, the military and everybody around you is is. Uh, like forcing you to do certain things and you have no choice. You just got to do it, right? And so this is how people in audience two with their respective level of maturity are able to interpret how to see people, right? NATO encroachment, right? There's empathy to Russia, right? Instead of saying Russia is bad, they uh, invaded Ukraine. Audience two people might look at it and say, well, you know what? Uh, NATO has built all these different things on the border to Russia and how is it that Russia can respond any in any other way than to say, you know what, keep pushing this out. Or they look at Ukraine and say well, they didn't fully it, like invade them, but they went to help the people of Donetsk uh, and Lugansk and these guys in the eastern Ukraine regions. And this is what they're doing. They're freeing these people because they there's a neo-Nazi enslavement. There's a necessary evil, if you want to say, and they're doing certain things that may look bad to the media, 
right? But if you look, dig deeper, they're doing something. And if you want to go as, as far as to say they're ridding the evil in Ukraine and you believe it, and wh- whatever term you want to use, neo-Nazis, the deep state, the Illuminati, all that stuff, they're helping free these people. So that's how people can see beyond a monolithic linear way to interpret what's going on. The same goes for uh, U.S., China, Russia, right? So U.S. can be working well with Russia and China, but the world sees it. The world, as in people in audience one, may look at it as being, no, there's like a very obvious tension and a hatred, but really audience two sees it as the people in and of itself, the right ideology, the right uh, groups, the right political groups that help and work towards doing good for society. There may be some disagreements, but to the degree that audience two looks at the world, the same goes for uh, Israel and Palestine. Israel and Palestine could be something like, well, there's provocation by the Hamas. It's not just the Palestinians. It's the Hamas people. Uh, when you look at uh, Hezbollah and Lebanon and you know now Iran, there are bad people within the country. There are good people. The good people, Q talks about the good people are, of Iran all the time. There's good people in Israel. There's bad people in Israel. And so that's why this orange indicates that it's it's um it, there's differences beyond what's at surface level beyond the optics and so the same goes for the U.S. and these guys because if you look at it there's innocent people versus evil people there's like I said Hamas leaders there's indoctrination there's even blackmail there's uh, the ability to minimize collateral damage while doing a necessary military operation to free hostages or to go in and to limit the movement or the encroachment of some of the terrorist organizations or just various other things, right? Diplomacy, limited military intervention. There's various other things that you got to look at and you're really trying to look at it from a deeper perspective. You can even go as far as to say they are doing this now as a chain reaction to stop Trump from getting back into office. There might be other sort of deep state implications if you want to think that way and say, why are they attacking now? Why are they doing certain things now? Is it because of the U.S., the election, and so many other things as a response to slow down you know, this movement, the, if you want to call it the Republican, the conservative, the MAGA, whatever movement we need because there's something else that we don't know. Audience, too, will even go as far as to say, you know what, what would happen if Trump gets into office? What would happen if you know, somebody else is there. Is there some kind of money laundering? Is there some kind of, you know, bad things going on? So they are trying to figure it out from a logical, uh, empathetical, hands up, a neutral perspective, right? If you look at what audience two does, audience two will look at, or I'm sorry, audience three, audience three will look at this as being more of the conspiracy type stuff, right? And so let's go into some of these things. So Russia and Ukraine, for example, right? What it looks like on the outside is Russia you know, defending or attacking or whatever, Ukraine. But what's happened, a lot of us in the truther community, the Q community, the, you know, the alternative media community, we're looking at it and we're saying Russia has come out with evidence to say, hey, and again, you can believe it or not, right? Russia has said, hey, these guys were developing bioweapons. So we had to go in before there was a COVID 2.0 or something worse. We had to neutralize the threat and there was extreme amounts of human trafficking and money laundering. So we had to go in. We had to be the bad cop. It looks bad. And even Trump, China, these guys probably behind the uh, closed doors. And again, according to Trump and Q, USA, China, Russia working together to dismantle the deep state, even though on the outside, Trump is saying things that are negative to Russia. Like, hey, I can stop this war. I can do this. There's multi-layers. Trump will, uh, because of optical reasons, say certain things and have a certain position while Russia is doing something quote unquote bad, but really it's a necessary evil in some sense to go and clean house because it's going to affect the world in a a worse way than it would be if you were to just go eliminate the threat and have this collateral damage. Because again, Ukraine, if it's true, there was bioweapons, there's a COVID 2.0, there was something even worse than that. It's going to affect the world. It was in some sense a necessary task, if you want to call it necessary evil for Russia to do this, but on the outside, Russia's not going to say this, the the US and the the politics, the optics, they're not going to admit this. They're just going to know this behind the scenes. And with China as well, CCP, these guys, they're, they're being enslaved by the Illuminati, by these guys, and they're working together to dismantle this, 
But on the outside, it will look bad. It will look to audience one and to audience two as not being good. But because of the greater, um, you know, the greater operation, the greater good to humanity, they have to do it this way. This is how uh, audience three looks at it. We don't. We may not know exactly who the names are and what, who's doing what, but we know that there's a a digestible optics out, outwardly for the world, right? Something that they have to be able to accept as being, oh yeah, you know, they're bad, they're good, and all that. But there's a mutually agreed counterstrike against the Illuminati and the global uh, uh, banking elite, based on what we know from Q and these guys of what what Trump and he's not going to say this outwardly, right? He's not going to say, oh, me and Putin got together and we eliminated the deep state and all these you know things. He's just going to say, I want peace. I can work to end this. And all that it's optics and that the uh, ukraine had bioweapons deep state money laundering I, m- I mentioned this and russia being used as a sacrificial lamb to clean up evil so this is how audience three currently has their story straight in some sense to handle this now let's talk about the other side right the same go and again notice the arrows are green the arrows are green here because again this is outside of how audience one and again the the operation from a higher level perspective, is greater than how it looks. I'm going to repeat that. It's greater than how it looks to audience one and audience two, right? You're not going to say all of these truths and these things, hey, like, you know, we're not going to attack, we want peace, all that stuff, because there's, in some sense, again, a necessary evil with military intervention. We don't know what that is. It could be the dismantling of human trafficking, again, maybe other you know, research uh, R&D of certain weapons. Uh, It could be, you know, uh, chopping the head off of certain evils that are trying to propagate evil and they look like they're good. It could be, and again, I could go as far as to say that there's a facade of Hamas and uh, the Hezbollah and these guys doing good things, but it's perceived to be bad, but they are part of a mutual operation in conjunction with maybe even all these guys And on the outside, it looks like, oh, Iran is doing bad things to Israel, but they're really targeting even some evil things within Israel, or it's an optical sort of thing to get people riled up so that it could be a distraction for something else, which is to destroy, I don't know, I'm making this up, tunnels within certain systems, within certain parts of this whole Middle East. And it could be a facade. There's a real war, of course, people, there's lives lost, but there's a, a facade of this duality of this person versus that person, but really it's a mutual coordination to get rid of the evil in some sense. So there's a systematic dismantling of the installed regimes of the deep state stronghold, but there's still something that needs to be done because people have to, I don't want to say die, but they have to go into battle to to do this forcefully with military or limited military intervention and in some sense diplomacy. So whatever that is, the same goes with what Russia had to do in Ukraine But to the world, because of the internet, because of viral videos, they had to make it look like something else. The same might be happening now. There could be something more that that may not even ever be brought to light. But they're uh, they're posting this or they're positioning this, optically speaking, such that it looks like what everybody is thinking as an audience two or audience one person, right? And so this, you know, is how some people will digest it. This audience too is how other people will digest it. But to those that really want to know the truth and can have some level of openness mixed with some skepticism, but a healthy level of, you know, faith and to say, you know what, there might be something to this. And again, I'm not saying I know what that is. I'm saying that audience three, if that was the case for Russia, Ukraine, time will tell what else happens with this, right? It may not be as simple as they're doing it now, because Trump is coming in, they want to create distractions. It could be something else for which it was timed perfectly as a greater white hat operation for the sake of uh, society and humanity. So this is where I want to just kind of leave it up for, I don't want to say interpretation, but want to know your thoughts, what you think, but to know that there's different levels of how to interpret and understand and discern the world around us. So again, if this is your first time being introduced to this idea of what audience one, audience two, audience three is, uh, follow me for more. I'm going to talk more about this as we move into exposure, the elections, and just various things that is happening in the world today. So love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.